Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. I think I'm getting a little more comfortable with this whole home recording situation and I really appreciate everyone that's been taking my classes. So today the theme or invitation is self-connection. Can we use this practice to start noticing how we feel in our physical body? Um, and that could be really obvious things like a twinge in our lower back or really subtle things like areas where we hold tension um, below the level of consciousness normally. Um, we can begin to notice the kinds of thoughts that flow through our mind and how feelings and emotions settle in the body. Now, how does stress feel in the body? How does relaxation feel in the body? Can we use the poses as a tool to begin to explore kind of our habits of body and mind? Are we the type of person that uh, pushes ourselves or holds back? Are we overly critical or are we mentally multitasking as we hold a pose for several breaths going through our grocery list? You know, these are all examples of the way we can begin to notice how we operate and how we feel. And the trick, the challenge is to do this with some humor and some self-compassion. All right, so let's get started. Comfortable seat. Uh, if you have two blocks, that's great. One block is great, or even a stack of books is great. So. You can sit in hero's pose like I am um, between my heels on a block, uh, or you could take the cross-legged seat and just feel your sitting bones grounding down evenly. Feel your hands resting on your thighs. It could be face down or face up and elbows hanging gently from the shoulders, some length through the spine, a little length in the back of the neck too. And if it's comfortable, close the eyes for a moment. Take several breaths to notice how you feel, body and mind. And you don't necessarily have to put words to it. Begin to make your breath a little deeper, a little more expansive. Right. On the inhale, you can imagine your rib cage, or actually feel your rib cage expanding front to back, side to side. And as you exhale, gentle drawing in of the lower belly. You might imagine that there's a jellyfish in your rib cage, and as you inhale, it's like a gentle, unforced expansion in all dimensions. And as you exhale, it's like from the lower belly up, a little bit of a shunting action that would propel that jellyfish forward through the water. Right, so it's the image is soft. Inhaling, expansive and soft and exhaling, gentle drawing in from the bottom up. Right, and if you're familiar with the ujjayi breath, you can start to bring that little whisper to the back of the throat as well. And just take a couple more breaths like that here. gently opening the eyes. You can lift your arms up to shoulder height and to a T. As you inhale, stretch through the fingers. And as you exhale, cross the right elbow under the left. You could either 
give yourself a hug here or lift the fingers to the ceiling, back of the hands press or palms press. And I will not be mirroring you through this practice. So lift your elbows up to shoulder height and then tilt your fingertips a little bit to the right and lower your left ear towards the left shoulder. A little bit of a neck stretch here. And keep that soft, expansive breath for one round of inhaling and exhaling. And come back to center with your head and your arms. Take an inhale, feel length upward through the spine. And as you exhale, that lower belly draws in and up and you twist around to the right. And take a breath here. And on an inhale, come back through center, stretch the arms wide, really stretch through the fingers. And as you exhale, left elbow under the right. Lift the elbows up to shoulder height. Tilt the fingers toward the left ever so slightly. And now it's the right ear that drops towards the right shoulder. Come back to center with the fingers and the face. We'll take an inhale to lengthen upward. Ribs draw away from the hips. And as you exhale, a little drawing in of the lower belly as you twist to the left. Inhale, come back to center, stretch the arms wide, and exhale, let the arms float down by the sides, and come to all fours. All right, line up the wrists right under the shoulders and the knees right under the hips. All right, thumbs kind of face each other, middle fingers facing forward and shifting some weight into all 10 fingers, taking it out of the heel of the hand. And going through some cat and cows with this soft, smooth breath. So as you inhale, tilt the pelvis so your tailbone is sticking up and without overly arching the lower back, kind of ripple through the spine, feeling each vertebra move a little closer to the one below it as you gently at the end of that inhale, draw the chest between the upper arms, lift the gaze, and as you exhale, tuck the pelvis under and round through the spine. Again, moving slowly and noticing something different in this familiar motion that we do so often as a spinal warm up. And continue like that, inhaling to slowly arch the back and exhaling to round. Maybe you notice that one part of the spine is more mobile and another part just seems to move in one big clump. All right, take a couple more rounds of that. back to a neutral spine. You walk your hands, one hand right forward, tuck the toes under and lift the hips up and back for downward facing dog. All right, but press the mat forward and down, lift the hips up and back, spin the upper arms outward, feel a little more space between the shoulder blades, a little bit more space around the neck. Press the heels down. All right, none of these actions are force. They're just directions that we're moving towards, moving in. All right, bring your attention back to your breath and see what the three-dimensional breath in the rib cage feels like here. Maybe you feel it a little bit more in the back body. Inhale, that jellyfish-like breath fills up the rib cage. And as you exhale, gentle drawing in and up of the lower belly. 
Next inhale, lift up on the heels and ripple through the spine coming towards plank pose. And we take an inhale here, lower belly engaged, arms straight and strong, chest drawn between the upper arms. And as you exhale, lower the knees, untuck the toes, shift your body forward so you're in a knees down plank, tailbone is heavy. And bend the elbows back, keeping the tops of the shoulders lifted and the chest broad as you lower down, make this small <laughs> movement towards the floor as challenging as you can and as slow as you can. And when you get down there, fingers in line with ribs, inhale for baby cobra. And press into the hands, lift the head and chest, keep the gaze down so you're leading from the heart, not the chin. And take one more inhale. And exhale, push through all fours, back to down dog. And I will do two more like that, moving a little quicker with the breath. Okay, inhale, forward into plank pose. Exhale, lower the knees, untuck the toes. Shift your waist slightly forward and then lower all the way down. Press it all one, exhale. Inhale, chest forward and up, baby cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. One more like that, inhaling to plank. Exhale, lower the knees, untuck the toes, lower all the way down, keeping the chest open and broad all the way down. Inhale, baby cobra. And exhale, down dog. Inhale, down the hands and knees. Step the right foot between the hands, keep the back toes tuck under for now. <clears throat> lift the torso, lift your hands up to your hip bones in the front, kind of draw them up a little, tailbone draws down. Press into the both feet as if you're about to stand up into high lunge, but you're not. There's some activity in the legs. Lift the arms up by the ears. Take a hold of the left wrist with the right hand Take a little side bend to the right. Inhale and exhale. Release your arms to a T and twist to the right. So left fingers coming forward, right fingers coming back. Take one more breath. Release the hands down around the front foot. Step back, downward facing dog. Take a breath here. Inhale, three-dimensionally into the ribcage. And exhale, lower belly slightly draws in and up. Inhale, down the hands and knees. Step the left foot between the hands. Lift the torso. Do this little adjustment so that your pelvis is in a neutral Place, not overly tilted forward. So lifting the hip bones up, tailbone draws down, and then press actively into both feet. Lift the arms by the ears, take a hold of the right wrist, take a side bend to the left. Release the arms to a T, take an inhale, and exhale, twist left. One deep breath here, inhaling and exhaling. Release the hands down on the front foot and step back, downward facing dog. One breath here. Inhale, down the hands and knees. All right, we'll set up for a modified side plank. Okay, so Kick your right shin out to the side at a 90 degree angle. Bring your left toes to the floor in line with your right knee. All right, before you lift up, press strongly into the right hand. That arm is nice and straight and the right shoulder blade draws onto the back. And then lift the left arm up and spread your wings. 
and you lift to the bottom hip. And you keep your head and neck in line with the rest of the spine. One more breath here. Release the left hand down, come back up to hands and knees, and then right over to the other side. So left shin comes out at a, and at an angle, like a kickstand. Right toes come to the mat in line with the left knee. Press through the floor with the left hand, so you're lifting up and out of that shoulder instead of sagging down into it. And that left shoulder blade draws onto the back. And then the right arm lifts. One more breath. Right hand releases down, back to all fours, and lift the hips for downward facing dog. Three. Soften the knees from here and take lots of little steps coming towards the front of the mat. See how far you can get while keeping your palms all the way down. And at a certain point, they probably need to lift up. When the feet come between the fingers, have the feet at hip distance, bend the knees a lot, lay your chest down on your thighs, hold on to opposite elbows, and let your head and neck relax. Right, there could be some free movement here. I like to kind of wiggle side to side, like I'm trying to get my ribs a little further away from my hips. Feeling the weight of my head and neck dropping down. One more deep breath in and out. Release the arms, tuck the tailbone and roll nice and slow from the base of the spine all the way up. Head coming up last. Few sun salutations. Right, so this is a, these movements are pretty familiar. Uh, so instead of just going through the motions, what is it that we can notice that's, that's new or subtle? Now you can start with your feet, hip bone distance or big toes can touch. Right, equal weight on inner and outer edges of the feet, toes spread nice and wide. Lift through the spine and a breath across the chest. Next, inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Press the palms at the top, lift the gaze. Exhale, arms sweep out and down as you hinge at the hips. Keep the knees soft. You're not hinging into the lower back as you fold forward. Inhale, lift the spine halfway. Hands come to shins, shoulders away from ears. Exhale. Fingertips down, step the right leg back, lower the back knee, low lunge. All right, use a blanket or doubled up mat here if your um, knee is sensitive. Right. On an inhale, lift the torso, get that neutral pelvis feeling as you lift the arms up by the ears. Maybe the gaze lifts. Exhale, hands down around the front foot. Step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, forward into plank pose. And as you exhale, get yourself all the way down to the mat. All right, I'm gonna alternate between lowering my knees and not lowering my knees. And you take whatever version makes more sense for you. Inhale, baby cobra. And exhale, down dog. And take two breaths here. Nice and slow and unforced. Right, notice if there's any tension in the neck. And see if you can arrange your head in a place that alleviates it. Ears lining up with biceps is a pretty good marker. On your next exhale, step your right foot between your hands. Lower the back knee. And as you inhale, lift the torso, lift the arms, lift the gaze. Exhale, hands down around the front foot. Step forward and fold. 
Inhale, lift up with a long spine. So maybe the knees are soft. And exhale, hands to the heart. One more like that. Inhaling, arms sweep out and up. Exhale, folding forward, hinging at the hips. Inhale, lift up halfway. Hands to shins, long spine, like you're telescoping your spine forward. Shoulders relax away from the ears. Exhale, fingertips down, step the left foot back, lower the back knee. Inhale, arms up by the ears. And exhale, hands down, step into downward facing dog. Inhale, forward into plank pose. And exhale, either get yourself all the way down to the mat, or maybe you're hovering for a moment in chaturanga. And as you inhale, baby cobra, or step to the tops of the feet, lifting the hips, straightening the arms, drawing the shoulders back. And exhale, hips lift, head lowers, downward facing dog. Two breaths here. Next exhale, step the left foot between the hands, lower the back knee, and on an inhale, lift the torso, lift the arms. Exhale, hands down around the front foot, step forward and fold. Inhale, lifting up, palms press at the top, gaze lifts, and exhale, hands to the heart. All right, two rounds of Surya Namaskar A, Sun Salutation A, coming up. Inhale. And exhale, fold. Inhale, lifting the spine. And exhale, plant the hands, step back to plank, and right away, same exhale, lower down all the way, or chaturanga. Inhale, baby cobra, or up dog. And exhale, down dog. Two breaths. You know, these moments of stepping back to this kind of home base pose of down dog can be moments of observation and taking stock. As, how are things feeling in the body, in the mind? Emotional content swirling through. On your next inhale, lift up on the toes. As you exhale, bend the knees, lower belly draws in and up. Look to the front of the mat. At the very end of that exhale, step, or maybe there's a little hop. And as you inhale, lift the spine halfway. And exhale, fold. Inhale, lift the torso, sweep the arms out and up. And exhale, hands to the heart. One more like that. Inhaling. And exhaling. Inhaling up halfway, exhale, plant the hands, step back and lower down. Inhale, baby cobra, upward facing dog, and exhale, downward facing dog. Next inhale, lift up on the toes. Exhale, bend the knees, lower belly draws in and up. Look to the front of the mat. The very end of that exhale, step or hop. And inhale, lengthen the spine. And exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Press the palms at the top. And exhale, the hands to the heart. With the big toes either touching or feet at hip distance, bend the knees, send the hips down and back, put the weight in the heels, bring your arms up by your ears, chair pose, and then holding here for a few breaths.
noticing where your mind tends to go as there is a physical challenge present. Noticing where you feel physical sensations. And take one more breath in. And as you exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift the spine halfway. Exhale, plant the hands. Step back to plank and lower down. Inhale, baby cobra or up dog. And exhale, back to down dog. Step the right foot between the hands and lift the torso, lift the arms by the ears for high lunge. And soften the back knee a touch, lift the front hip bones up, tailbone down. Take an inhale here. And as you exhale, lower the back knee so that it's hovering a couple inches off the floor. Draw the arms down into cactus arms, pressing the forearms back. As you inhale, Work the back leg towards straight, lift the arms by the ears. And exhale, lower the back knee, cactus arms. One more time like that, inhaling, straightening the back knee, lifting the arms. And exhale to lower. This time as you inhale, release your hands down around the front foot. Walk the hands forward of the front foot. Could be on blocks here. and then lift up the back leg to about hip height. So we're kind of in a supported warrior three like shape. Okay, working that standing leg straight and the right hip drawing back, both hip bones pointing down and the spine lengthening forward. Take one more inhale. And as you exhale, soften into that standing knee. Step the lifted leg back. Inhale, high lunge. Spread your arms to a T and take a twist to the right. One breath in and one breath out. Release the hands down around the front foot. Step back into plank pose. Take an inhale here in plank and exhale. Here's our vinyasa element. So lowering down nice and slow. Inhale, baby cobra or upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Set the left foot between the hands. Lift the torso, lift the arms by the ears. All right, pelvis lifts upright, back knee softens. Take another inhale here. And as you exhale, lower the back knee to hover, arms come down into cactus arms. Inhale, try to keep the hips low as you work the back leg towards straight and arms up. And exhale, hovering the back knee, arms into cactus. One more time, inhaling. And exhaling. Inhale, release the hands down around that front foot. Walk them forward, maybe onto blocks. Lift the back leg. Supported warrior three. Standing leg works towards straight. Left hip draws back. Hips, hip bones pointing down. Back leg lifting to about hip height. And spine lengthening forward. One more breath. Soften into the standing leg. Plant the back foot on the mat. Lift the torso, lift the arms. Bring your arms out to a T. And take a twist to the left. 
One inhale and one exhale. Release the arms up by the ears and down around the front foot. This time, step the back foot forward to meet the front. Widen the feet, almost as wide as the mat, toes pointing slightly out. Bend the knees, sink the hips, malasana, squat pose. Okay. Upper arms and inner thighs or inner knees make contact. Spine is long, hands come towards the heart. Slight pushing of the arms and legs into one another. One more breath. Release the hands, lower yourself down to the mat for a Navasana boat pose. Okay, so rolling up onto the sitting bones, keeping a long spine, broad chest, shins lift. I'm gonna hold on behind my thighs so I can focus on that lower belly in and up feeling. I'll take a few breaths here. You're welcome to straighten your arms as well or release them from the back of the thighs. We be active and engaged and soft at the same time. One more breath in and out. Release the feet to the floor. Bring your hands behind your hips, fingers facing towards you, towards your body. Press into the hands, press into the feet, lift the hips up, reverse table. Chin can stay tucked into the chest or you can Lift the gaze to the ceiling. See if you can lift the hips a little higher for one more inhale. And exhale, lower back down. One more round of Navasana. Rolling to the front edge of the sitting bones. Lifting through the spine, broadening across the chest. Shins a lift. And again, you can hold on behind the thighs or you can release the arms. Release the feet, bring the hands behind the hips, reverse tabletop on an inhale, lifting the hips. One more breath in, and as you exhale, lower down. Cross of the shins, roll over, and step back. Downward facing dog. One breath here. And as you inhale, roll forward to plank pose. And as you exhale, get yourself down to the mat. Whatever is the most appropriate way with control. <laughs> to avoid the flop. And I stretch the arms out in front so that your palms are facing each other. Lengthen each leg long behind. Right? And kind of relax your forehead down to start. As you inhale, lift your right leg and your left arm, head and chest lift slightly too. And exhale to lower. Inhale, left leg and right arm. Variations on locust pose and exhale to lower. And moving like that slowly with your slow pace of breath. Opposite leg, opposite arm as you inhale. And as you exhale, relax everything down. Inhaling. And exhaling. Inhaling. And exhaling. One more time each side, inhaling. And exhaling. 
exhaling. Inhaling to lift. And exhaling to relax. This time as you inhale, lift both arms and both legs. And hold. One more inhale. And exhale. Oh, release. Make a little pillow with the backs of your hands. Rest your forehead. And take some soft breaths into the belly. Bring your hands alongside your ribcage. Press your way up to all fours and then come to stand up on your shins with the toes tucked under. Right. Baby camel or camel. Bring your hands to your lower back. You could kind of wrap around the sides or fingers can face up the spine. Right. Hips right over the knees, a little bit of lower belly activation elbow drawing down. Draw the elbows towards each other, shoulder blades come towards each other. Feel a lift from the center of the chest and that's the major movement area in the pose. Head and neck kind of doing what they want to do. They can stay tucked, chin can stay tucked or gaze can lift. All right, if this feels great and you want to take it a little further, you can release your hands down to the heels. One more breath. All right, engage the belly, come back up with care, and then sit back on the heels for a moment, for a moment of observation Closing the eyes without too many words or analysis, just feeling around in there. Right, open the eyes one more round, just like that. And standing up on the shins tucking the toes, and you could have the toes untucked too. That would be a deeper back bend, reaching back for the heels, hips over knees, hands to the lower back, shoulder blades and elbows drawn towards each other, lifting from the center of the chest. One more breath. And then coming up nice and slow, sitting back on the heels, resting the hands on the thighs, closing the eyes. And opening the eyes softly. Coming back to all fours and seeking a thread the needle pose. And so as you inhale, lift the right arm out to the side and up. The whole rib cage and chest opens to the right. And as you exhale, thread the right arm behind the left, coming down to the side of the shoulder and the side of the face. All right, that left hand can um, do a variety of things. You know, some people like to stretch it forward or wrap it around for the opposite hip crease. I like to press my hand down in front of my face and then press the back of my right hand down at the same time. Get a little um, engagement in the upper back. Make one more breath. Push, bring that left hand back down in front of your face, push into that left hand, 
Draw yourself up to all fours. Sweep the right arm out to the side and up one more time and release back. Now, same thing on the other side. Inhale, left arm out and up. And exhale, thread the left behind the right. Taking a variation with the right arm, if you would enjoy it. One more breath. And press into the right hand. Lift yourself back up to all fours. Sweep the left arm up to the side and up. And exhale, release. Shift the hips back to the heels. Take a child's pose. It could be with the knees together or the knees could be wide. Arms could be stretched out in front or they could be back by your hips. Take a couple of breaths to observe. Connecting with yourself with humor and self-compassion. And then slowly making your way back to all fours, tucking the toes, lifting the hips, downward facing dog. Soften the knees, walk the feet towards the hands. And when you get to the top of the mat, Chest lays down on the thighs, so the knees are pretty bent here. Hold on to opposite elbows. Take one breath in this ragdoll. And release the elbows. Tuck the tailbone and roll your way up to stand nice and slow. Take eagle pose. Block might come in handy or the support of a wall. Bend your knees, send your hips back and down, just a mini, mini chair pose like action. Shift the weight into the right foot, engage the muscles of that leg and hip, like as if you're going to straighten that leg back out. But instead, you're gonna lift the left foot. Just get your bearings there with the left foot slightly lifted. And then cross the left knee over the right. All right, so if your balance is challenged, you could rest the left toes on a block there, or they could just kind of be hanging out, or they could even tuck behind the right calf. All right, hip bones want to rotate to the right. See if you can draw them back so they're pointing straight. Arms come to a T. Left elbow crosses under the right. So you could give yourself that hug again or the fingers can reach towards the ceiling. Elbows lift. All right. Send the hips back and down a little bit more. And find a soft gaze and fix it at one point. All right, notice what's working and what might be just gripping, holding on for dear life. See if there's anything you can soften or release. And take one more breath. And slowly lift up, unwind the legs, unwind the arms, come to stand. Just take a breath to release and recalibrate one of these intentionally deep rib cage expanding ujjayi breaths. And exhale from the bottom up. All right, bend the knees, send the hips back, mini utkatasana. Get your block ready on the left side if the toes are going to rest on that block. All right, so first just shift the weight to the left foot and lift the right foot an inch or two off the mat. So all the muscles in that left leg are now really 
turned on and active. Cross the right knee on top of the left. Maybe the toes tuck behind the calf, hip bones try to face forward. And a right elbow crosses under the left. And sink the hips back and down, lift the elbows up. Thighs squeezing together. Mm. Shoulders, neck, jaw, <laughs> maybe relaxed. And take one more breath. And slowly unwind, coming to stand. Release the arms, release the legs. One deep breath. Right. Feet at hip distance. Again, pour the weight into the right foot, this time um, keeping that leg straight. Maybe there's just the tiniest bend in the knee, if that's appropriate. Bring your hands to your heart. Step the left toes back, so you're on the ball of the left foot. Right. Keeping the right leg engaged. Start to tip the torso forward, lifting the back heel, moving towards warrior three. So nice and slow. See what kind of angle you're working with today. And keep drawing the right hip back. Hip bones both kind of facing the floor as opposed to the left one opening out. All right, keep the shoulders relaxed, head and neck in line with the rest of the spine. All right, at whatever point you need to, or want to, uh, release your fingers down to blocks. Take that supported warrior three version that we saw earlier. Make your hands come all the way down to the mat. Take one more breath. Either lift back up to warrior three, or simply step that lifted leg back into a lunge. Right, and then lift the torso, high lunge, bring your hands to the heart. All right, taking a revolved side angle twist from here. Left elbow crosses to the outside of the right thigh, or you could bring your left hand down inside the front foot and the right arm up. All right, so it's a little milder of a twist. So you're going in, left elbow outside of right thigh, hands come towards the heart, in prayer, and keep the back thigh lifted. All right. Keep the gaze where it's comfortable. Maybe it's down for the most stability, or maybe it's creeping up towards the ceiling. One more breath. And slowly unwind the hands, lower the back knee. Bring both hands inside the front foot. So wiggle the right foot off to the right a bit. Wizard lunge. All right, so lots of options here. You can stay here up on the hands, or you could potentially lower the forearms to a block or all the way to the floor. And keep the front knee kind of hugging in towards the, the upper arm. Back knee can stay down or it can lift. One more breath. Lengthening the sternum forward. And slowly making your way back up onto the palms of the hands. Step the left Step the back leg forward, meet the right. So you're in a forward fold. Bring the feet to parallel and hip distance. Take a hold of the big toes with the first two fingers and thumb of each hand. Bend the knees enough, obviously, to make that happen. And then the, the big toes press down as the fingers lift up. 
Soften your head and neck down while you lift the shoulders away from the floor. Maybe the elbows wing out a little bit to the sides. Right? And then lift, lift through the sitting bones to whatever extent makes sense for you. All right, so head and neck relaxed. Arms are working, legs are working. And notice this kind of inversion-like quality of this pose. Mm. Observe sensations, thoughts. Without too many layers of analysis on top, just kind of notice what's going on. And slowly release the toes. Widen the feet. Toes point slightly out. Sink the hips. Malasana. We're going to take a little twist from here. So if this is a challenging pose for you, you could always sit on a block. Right. Release your right hand down at a low diagonal. So that arm and leg are contacting each other and then lift the left arm out and up twisting the torso open to the left lifting the gaze one breath here and come back to center hands at the heart and now release the left hand down kind of arm pushes the leg open right arm lifts Deep inhale and deep exhale. And then coming back to center, release the hands, lift the hips, back in a forward fold, soften the knees, and roll your way up to stand. Shift the weight into the left foot, and bring your hands to your heart, step right toes back. You're on the ball of the right foot. Torso starts to lean forward as back heel starts to lift. Uh, take it nice and slow. Feel, feel all the little movements that contribute to balance. All the little stabilizing, strengthening movements. All right, release your fingers down to supported Warrior three at any time. Take one more breath here. And step the lifted leg back. Lift the torso, high lunge. And set up for your twist, whether that's right hand down, left arm up, or Right elbow crossing over to the outside of the, the, the left thigh, hands coming into prayer. As the hands draw towards the chest, the whole rib cage rotates open to the left, back thigh stays lifted. One more round of breath here. Slowly unwind. Lower the back knee. Walk both hands to the inside of the front foot. Wiggle that left foot off to the left. And take your lizard lunge option that you'd like on this side. So you can stay up in the palms. Forearms can lower. Back knee can stay down or it can lift. One more slow and smooth breath in and slow and smooth breath out. Slowly lower the back knee, come back up onto the palms. And this time, make your way back to downward facing dog. Take a couple breaths here, 
to take a couple breaths in child's pose. And back to a place of stillness and observation. And we'll make our way onto our back. So if you're in downward facing dog, lower down behind the knees, swing the legs around. And roll yourself down. All right, so we'll make our way through a few rounds of bridge pose. If you'd like to take a restorative version of bridge, you can have a block handy for that. So walking the heels towards the sitting bones. And starting with the arms down by the sides. On an inhale, press into the feet, lift the hips. I feel the hamstrings and glutes working here. Don't come up to your absolute fullest, highest extent just yet. All right, feel the knees kind of drawing in towards one another tailbone directing itself towards the knees. All right, take one more breath in and exhale, lower down. All right, we've got two more of those. Feel free to put the block under the sacrum at any time and just kind of hang out here for a few breaths. Block could be on the low height, could be on the medium height. Or maybe you're not using the block and on your next inhale, you're pressing into the feet, lifting the hips. This time, lift the hips a little higher. Maybe take a hold of the outer edges of the mat and kind of pull so that your shoulders are activated or interlace the fingers behind the back. Wiggle the shoulder blades a little closer together. Press the interlace fist down. Lift the hips a little higher. Also think about lifting the chest up towards the chin. That's how we get the, the back bend action into the pose, chest towards chin. One more breath in. And exhale. Release the hands if you've got them and lower the hips. All right, just stay exactly as you are. Take a breath, let the spine come back to a neutral feeling. And one more round of bridge. If you feel so inclined, you could always take Orva Dhanurasana here too. Um, but I'll just take bridge. So pressing into the feet, lifting the hips, Maybe interlacing the hands behind the back. Chest towards chin. One more inhale. And exhale. Release the hands and lower the hips. Widen the feet as wide as the mat. Let the knees lower down to the left. And then lift them up to center and lower them to the right. You can do that a few more times. You can go fast or slow. See what you might feel in the hips and the lower back. back to center. Hug both knees into the chest. Give yourself a little squeeze. Rock a little from side to side. And then 
cross the right knee over the left. So a little different from the figure four stretch that we normally do. It's more like eagle pose legs on your back. All right, so either you're either reaching down for like the knees or shins and just kind of pulling towards your torso, or if you have a little bit more range, you could slide your hands down closer to the ankles and like you're separating your feet and ankles wide and pulling towards your torso. You get a different kind of stretch in the outer hips. And then release that pull with the arms, but keep the legs as they are. You could even tuck the left toes behind, or I'm sorry, tuck the right toes behind the left calf. All right, lower the feet to the floor, but you're still, the legs are still intertwined. Shift your hips slightly to the right, and then lower your knees to the left. So you're in a reclined twist, but the legs are like eagle pose legs. All right, arms come to a T, chest opens towards the ceiling, towards the right. Right arm releases. The gaze can either be up or to the right. bring the knees back to center, unwind the legs, and we'll do those two poses on the other side. So left knee crosses over right, either just holding on to the knees or shins and drawing in towards your torso, or maybe you're sliding your hands towards your ankles, separating the feet and pulling with the arms to keep separating the feet, drawing the feet towards your head. One more breath here. Release the pull of the arms. Uh, maybe wrap left toes behind right calf. Lower the feet to the floor. Shift the hips slightly to the left and lower the knees to the right. Chest opens, left arm comes out to a T. back to center, unwind the legs, ah, stretch the legs out long for Shavasana. All right, so legs are separated, maybe almost as wide as the mat, feet kind of flopping out, shoulder blades walk onto the back, palms face up, Chin slightly tucked so the back of the neck is long. Close the eyes. Take a deep breath. Expanding rib cage, relaxing belly. Open the mouth and sigh. And spend these next few minutes feeling whatever you feel in the body noticing whatever you notice in the mind. I'm not forcing relaxation to happen, but creating the conditions for it. And if it's there, really relishing in the feeling of relaxation in the body.
slowly starting to wiggle fingers and toes. Maybe rocking the head from side to side. Draw the knees gently in towards the chest. Roll off to one side. And using your hands for support, come up nice and slow. We don't want to jolt our nervous system too much after Shavasana. Rufus was taking Shavasana on the couch this whole time. Yeah. Come to a comfortable seat for one last moment and bring the hands to your heart. Close the eyes. And with gratitude for this practice and for the self connection that it brings. Namaste. Yeah, thanks for practicing with me today. We'll see you next time.